Hi, my name is Avi Blumenspiel, and I am the Sofer for the Congregation Torah's Chaim Sefer Torah Project. We're continuing today our series of videos in the forms of the Hebrew letters, and we're going to pick up things with the third letter of the Hebrew alphabet, the alphabet, which is the letter Gimel, right up here. Now, the basic form of the Hebrew letter Gimel is that it has a head up here at the top, and a right leg and a left leg. Um, this is the uh, fundamental form over here, just drawn out in a stick figure to show you the basic concept. Now, the composite form of the letter, the form in which we view the letter as being comprised of other smaller letters, is that of a Hebrew letter, Zion, and a Yud attached at the bottom. Now, there are two important Talmudic teachings that affect and illuminate us as to the form of the letter Gimel. The first is from that is a brisa that's found in the Talmud Babali, in the Babylonian Talmud of the Sechus Shabbos, which tells us, Shalom Asim Gamin Tzadim, that you should not make your letter Gimel like the letter Tzadi. So the natural question is, in what way can the Hebrew letter Gimel resemble the letter Tzadi? They apparently don't look anything at all alike. Here's a Gimel up top, and here's a Tzadi down here. So the answer that the Rishonim, the uh, medieval commentaries on the Talmud, tell us is that it's referring to a gimel when it's inverted, when it's flipped upside down, like we have here. When a gimel is turned upside down, its fundamental form resembles the fundamental form of the final tzadi, the tzadi peshuta, the form of the letter tzadi when it occurs at the end of words. This is what the Talmud is telling us. The correct form of the Gimel is such that when it is inverted, it does not resemble the form of the Tzadi Peshutta. Okay, so what do, we, what do we do with that practically? So the, the post can tell us that the idea is that in the Tzadi Peshutta, the heads are on an equal level. In the Gimel, to both emphasize the fact that there is no left-hand head on the inverted Gimel, and to also emphasize the fact that the uh, legs are not equal length, we should make an alteration to the gimel, and we should extend the left-hand side, or when it's inverted, the right-hand side, so that it's higher than the level of the other leg, or head, and flipped upside down. So, in order to make a kosher gimel, the right leg on this side has to extend lower and come further down than the left leg. And so if it's inverted, it further distances the form of the Gimel from the form of the Tzadi Peshutta. Now what happens if you find a Gimel in your Sefer Torah, in your Tefillin, in your Mezuzos, and the legs are of equal length like that? What's the status? According to the majority of poskim of decisors of Jewish law, uh, this is a puzzle gimel. It invalidates your tefillin or your mezuzos, and um, they cannot be used anymore. The good news is, however, that it is possible to still correct tefillin and mezuzos if you find the gimel where both legs are written evenly. That's a very big plus, because most of the time, if you find the letter that's written incorrectly and to fill in the mezuzos, there's nothing you can do to save it. They have to be uh, varied or put in the geniza. But in this case, you can correct the gimel. So it's very important whenever you're buying mezuzos, buying to fill in or uh, buying a megillah, to be sure to check that the, that the legs of the gimel are written correctly, meaning that the right leg is written lower than the left. If the left leg is lower than the right leg, it's still kosher, because in that case, the, heads are, the legs are uneven, which is exactly what you want. But it's best that the right leg be longer. And if they're equal, then you do have a problem, and you need to ask a, a sofer or a rabbi. Similarly, if you find this during the time of Kriya Sapara, during the Torah reading, um, then you should make a shiloh uh, on that sefer Torah. All right, the second important teaching that affects the form of the letter Gimel is from the Talmud Yerushalmi, which is known as the, um, the Palestinian Talmud, the Jerusalem Talmud, in the Sefer Shabbos, Daf Kuf Dalet, page 104, where it lists a number of midrashim, a number of beautiful interpretations regarding the nature of the Hebrew letters. 
and it takes them sort of two at a time. Aleph, Besa, Aleph, Bez, and then Gimel, Dalas. So when the Talmud gets to Gimel, Dalas, it points out that Gimel, Dalas, sounds a lot like the phrase Goimel, Dalim, which means to do kindness to the poor. The word Gimel, the name of this letter, is similar to the Hebrew word Goimel, which means to do kindness. And Dalas is similar to the word Dalim, which means the poor. So the Gemara tells us that it's that we can learn something from the form of the Gimel and the Dalas. You see how the left leg of the Gimel is written like a hand extending forward um, to the Dalit who is turned away from the Gimel. So you can tell us here that it's the nature of someone, someone whose nature it is who wants to do kindness and chesed to other people, a Gimel chesed, a person like that, the, the right way, the best way is to go after. You go to the people that are in need and you offer them. You don't wait for them to ask you. You run after those who are in need and you extend your hand. You don't wait for them to come looking to you. That's the best way to really be a Gaimel Chassad and to go out and help other people is to be proactive. So from there we see the Talmud is telling us that the leg of the Gimel is extended forward to the Dalit as if it's holding out an offering. So this is another important teaching that we learned from the Gimel. Um, we learn not only that the correct form is that the leg is extended outward, but it also teaches us something about how we should conduct our own lives and how we should approach mitzvahs, and especially the mitzvah of Gimilas um, Chasadim, of doing kindness with other people. Okay, we're going to pick up these videos um, either later this week or early next week with uh, the Hebrew letter Dalit, the fourth letter in the Hebrew Aleph phase. Please visit ctc-torah.org to follow the progress of our Safer Torah project, and please remember to donate to support this important endeavor. Thank you very much.